Here we are racing around on Monday, the, it's, I don't know, some day in December. It's the rant, Glenn. It's the oh, rant. The There's a lot happening. We just had our Christmas party on Friday night. Which Thanks for was, mm. I fucking loved that night. I had mm. such a good time. Yeah, that's because you didn't get out enough, Mark. It was okay. It wasn't that grouse. It was huh? good. Oh, right. Good so fun. you're comparing it to something else. Anyway, I had a great time. In an office all time. I think, I think it was a very, very good night. Since then, we've also publicised the fact that we're in, in court. So obviously we can't say much about the fact that we're in court, but we are in court, Glenn. Court's good. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Emma, how am I going in there? So sorry to all those people that are obviously asking and wanting to know what's going on. Um, you know, we'll just have to leave you to speculate amongst yourselves. There it is. God, but it sounds like so much like mainstream media there, doesn't it? Oh. Or a politician, you know? <laughs> oh, Jesus. What can't we talk creep. about? Speaking yeah. of politics, uh, Rose Hill on Saturday, Glenn, um, played a bit different after um, after a few weeks of... Um, yeah. Um, of uh, fence on up, fire. Fence on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I certainly got a little feel for uh, the inside being particularly uh, tough to make ground with Bravista. Had no, the drop on race two, yeah, yeah. popped underneath them, and, and for about 150 meters, between yep. 350, just went up and down, and then got going. But like, yeah, yeah. And just, yet again, another pearl, the one that actually cuts her on the inside and wins is in the distance race, where it's all about saving ground, isn't and it? And I yeah. heard Duffy talk about that for a while there on Red Trail on Saturday. I think it was Duff, and uh, I thought, wow, Lamborn, you've provided so many racing journalists and people with your own pearls that they can run off. So. Well, but that's what happens in life, you know. Yeah, we all run off everybody. That's right. right. It's, uh, you know, yeah, some, every... Someone has to start them. And actually, most of that stuff comes straight from P. Todd, and he could say it came from somewhere else. I was talking to a friend the other day about something to do with something, nothing to do with racing, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying, you know, they're really using that bloke up, and that's wrong, and they just, like, make a comment, and the bloke said to me, doesn't everybody use everybody? Mm. And that's part of the sure. whole. How often do you have an original thought, do you reckon? It's always at least gleaned off somebody else's it is prompt. I think I have know. a few more than most people. Mine, oh, mine are a bit odd. Yes. <laughs> mine are yeah, mine yeah. quite odd. <laughs> That's why they're original. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I know what you mean. I remember as a younger bloke uh, on the race course, I, I, I would listen so intently to Guy Burnham and Frank and, and Chris Hickey when he was alive and those sort of blokes, they were like, they, yeah, were, the, they, they were the mod squad of the ring. And I was like this little whippersnapper, and, and any word that came out of Guy's mouth, I used to think, well, first of all, it was so funny, and second of all, I'd, I'd reuse it and rehash it. And then in my later years, I reckon I've run off a lot of Gary Clark's thoughts and reused and rehashed a lot of his yeah. stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we all use everybody. What, kind as a kitten? I kind say, as a kitten. I say that all the time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, long, shorts and long socks. <laughs> Just all these classics. But I remember I ran off Guy. What shorts there. and long socks mean? It means, um, no, it means, um, how do I put it in context? Uh, you know, when you're talking about the, you, you, yeah, you're talking about older days when everyone wore shorts and long socks. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You back go, in the day. Back yeah, in the 70s. Back in the day, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah 60s, okay. yeah. Back in those days. So, he, 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 like, you know, a lot of people, you know, you run off a lot of people, yeah. especially in a because there's so many different characters, yeah. you get to bludge off a stack of people. But I'd say Guy was that. The person I ran off to the most. And it's the same with ideas about how you're going to gamble as well, or how you're going to punt. Oh, you, you, you hear you hear somebody talking about something that you've got respect for, and you mightn't do it exactly, but you adjust it to suit you, and then hopefully you can make some money out of it. Yeah. It's funny how we all just. And then you'd run off Ray Hopkins, but he never said much. No, no, but he, he, was, he, was, he, he was dazzling, wasn't he, Ray? Oh. You know, he just just his swagger and he, just the way he carried himself and, and um, his shoulders back and just look at you and go, yeah, I'll bet you. Oh, it's just awesome, man. Hmm. So we caught sort of Ray, side of Ray on uh, YouTube there the other last week. Uh, there's a a little uh, three minute clip of uh, how bookmaking was gone in 1987. And there was only 89 bookies in the race. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. That 89 bookies. That's right. And you, there was a very quaffed P. Todd at the back of his head. You could see he had a ton of hair. It was like, you can't imagine him with that hair. That much oh, hair, I remember with that one. Yeah, I know. I remember. It wasn't him, a mullet, but it was like, it was pretty close. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Anyway, does. so there's a, there's a YouTube clip there which. Uh, How do they go to it, mate? Um, I think. Can we put it on the ransom? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I got, Another got, brushed, got brushed by the boss because she said too much was happening, but I'll, I'll, I'll repost yeah, it. Yeah, I, I watched it. It was fantastic. Just great seeing all the other. You know, Jeff Landry. Uh, well, you have his red brace. Phil on. Matt's up there yeah. standing. And Phil Matt's, yeah. Phil Matt's. He died years ago, too, Phil. Everyone's well, he did take a lot of what, bungers. Was there a time when you guys were at the races with mullets and moustaches? 
I never had a mullet. I've never had a mullet. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Glenn we're talking about. I don't have a mullet. Well, it just seems like everybody from that is it late seventies or something like that <laughs> had, had a mullet? mullet and a moustache. Yeah, I yeah. remember at school I used to have like long fuzzy hair out here, and I cut my fringe like over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Your mum used to cut it there, or no? You that, was, that was a cool cut. That no, was a cool it was cut. Like a, yeah. yeah, it's a surfy cut type thing. Oh wow! Man, well, it's fucking weird look. So I, I thought the, um, the the way Rose Hill played made it a bit tricky. The um, they must have put a ton of water on that track because the penetrometer on Saturday morning was 5.05. And you know if you have some overnight rain, they put up the penetrometer as 5.05. They go soft six. Right. Wow. So and you know it's been so hot, so dry, no rain, too much watering. That's a lot of hosing at Rose Hill, which ah uh, you know it's a, it's such a I, I don't mind racing like that. I mean, I, but it, it, you sort of have to be a bit prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we're at, right back at Rose Hill again this Saturday, just just for something different. Hawkesbury again on the Sunday, just for something different. Another bonzer meeting there yes, at Hawkesbury. You cracked the first leg of the quaddy at the thirteen dollars, ridden by A Hieronymus, Timmy Martin. First up, no trial, yeah. just ready to race. And you thought, you beauty, first leg of the quaddy in the thirteen dollars. You got the old two hundred dollar dividend because it goes even seven or four evens. And you were you were wide, were you, in the later legs? Or? No, I didn't play. I'm just oh, talking yeah. about the actual like fields, like just like yeah, yeah, it's Sunday, I, I, Sunday I, racing. It's, if uh, I don't get used to backing like even to six or four chances, I'm not going to survive this game because just too many of them win. Yeah. You'll, you'll become a multi man. You know, you'll play the multis. all up, all up, all up. Huh? Yeah. That, that would be my luck too. I'd get like seven out of eight. Seven out of eight. Oh, oh no. Right. There's so, boss. so. Um, but, uh, okay, talking point number one about Saturday, Jay Doyle, how did he parade? Like, like, like honestly, what I said to you last week was going to be money to made. Shh. Um, this is Glenn Pollock rewinding, 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 rewinding. Back him. He's an absolute freak. And uh, but, well, well, So, so the way he looked in race one, I don't remember Jay Doyle looking like that at all last time he came. That was awesome. That was, that was awesome. Like Get out of the way. Sure, that wasn't Jay McDonald like masquerading under Jay Doyle's name. Fucking Jay McDonald, if he gets 12 months, which we've got no idea what he's going to get, he will not be back for Godolphin. If this kid decides to stay, he's better than Jay Mac already. He's got a little bit of problem just getting out of the gates because in England, I think they just sit there and they go, yeah, on a long oh, ride. That's, that's, yeah, they don't, they don't have automatic barriers here. He's, he's, like a, he's, yeah. he's aggressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. he's aggressive. Start. He's got perfect balance, but but Sydney racing, it's so important to be out of the barrier as well. He he's does got to work on he, that. He, he sits here with a long rein. If you watch him, he's, he's sitting on a long rein, yeah. and he goes, mm. Oh, fuck, I'm last. He'll work that out because he's yeah. quick there. But I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, no one, no one hits a horse harder since natural willow than this boy and he hits it harder than natural when he goes whack you can see the horse go fuck me he might have some problems going forward with the antsy pantsy crowd and the stewards like you know uh, you know the green side of racing whereas okay with you know uh, under six whips and the this green side of well, you know what i mean <laughs> like like this bloke hits uh, a couple of those cracks i was down there at the 300 the 200 when he went Whack! I went, Jesus, what was that? And then I went, what's the table? I went, oh, what was that? But the important thing there is, is he stays balanced when he's doing it. As Very well. balanced. So we gave you the big heads up here on the racing rant. Like, what a beauty. We're going to lay him for six months. Retract, retract, retract. Back, back, back. So, Glenn, you got, you got, but you got uh, Shell in, in race one because you obviously saw a very good looking type. And he must have been a very good looking type because that's what the market was saying, not the trials were saying about Pimble. Yeah. And straight away, you're on the <laughs> you're the only horse on the inside. Welcome to Rose Hill, yeah. Glenn Pollitt. Cool. Um, yeah. uh, we do have to take note of all these horses that you have touted through the spring that look great and are just being dudded by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get involved with me if you think you're going to be lucky. You've got to be a lucky person and work out my tips. All right. So, but you, you said that the the, the the eventual winner was a bit small. It was a bit small, but that's the second O'Shea horse I've seen this year that's a bit small. That's what it was. And the other one won really well too. Rocket! Yeah. Uh, years Just gone really. by, I've always stayed away from um, uh, small two-year-olds. It makes sense, doesn't it? Like, well, it depends, you know? Like, it's... it's, it's well, they're rockets. rockets. They're rockets. So, yeah. they're, they're, the, they're the real deal. And uh, I can't do much about their physicality when I've never seen them run, but... How that horse got bumped so bad at the 300 and picked itself up and then just sprinted, I'll never know. 
By the, by well, the way, we know now if there's a small O'Shea horse in the yard but it's trialled well, ignore the smallest and go off the trial. That's what I'll be doing from yeah. now on. Yeah. That's the second time bitten, yeah. maybe the third time. Yeah. Anyway, there's no, there's nothing great in the figures there. It's just as you were, uh, typical early season two-year-olds, probably not much in the race or whatever was in the race, it wasn't ready to run. Well, talking about the race, wasn't it amazing to see... Um, Six horses race for hundred thousand dollars, and you got good fella who will end up finishing up at Rockhampton one day. He picked up another nearly twenty thousand dollars for running second and just being a tradesman. Isn't Baker a marvel at that? Oh, he's so, a marvel. So, yeah. so big hello to all those who are in those horses because clearly they're playing the game. We're out there trying to make a living punting, which is a lot tougher than getting the right stable and getting into the right horses and being part of the gravy train. Because there's plenty of money there, you know. You look at that race there, like uh, seventh, eighth, fees. ninth, and tenth, all got two thousand dollars, and that money's not distributed. Yeah, I know, but like, God, there's, there's there's people that are playing the regulation old style, you know, let's own a horse. Yeah, it's it's cost it costs a lot of money, and then there are those that are targeting exactly the right area of the market. It's the magic millions two year olds that are turning up here in these races and just earning prize money that they don't deserve. You know what I'd be targeting? Massive win, train the shit out of it, sell it to Hong Kong. <laughs> Another great idea which we've exploited previously. Race two, Glenn. Now, my thought about this race was I, I've seen a few of those impressive to uh, impressive debut winners of gays come just, to town and just before you get there, mate. I just just quickly, I'm, I'm just got this in my head. With something like Goodfellow, we could see this just going back. He could have another five stars in Sydney and qualify for a Golden Slipper. Just through prize money, through Baker racing him, yeah. not worth the stamp, should be five. You get up Thursday, the Golden Slipper, they're at the Barrier, or Tuesday, or whatever, which got Barrier 16. The heavens tumble down, we don't know who were wet trackers yet, and, and yeah. Goodfellow on a bog might win a Golden Slipper, because it was racing as an early two-year-old, yeah. experienced, and got some money, and, and after wins the Golden Slipper, uh, a year and a half later, off to Rockhampton. That's what I'm saying, like, it's just like, it's awesome. What happened to an unencumbered? Well, he went to start. Yeah. I'd like to talk about that because Nathan used to go to bars. Anyway, go to race two. Yeah, so initially I thought, oh, I've seen a few of these gay uh, debutante winners, impressive debutante winners, like fall over when they come to a Saturday race. We've seen it a lot. So I asked Paul to have a look at the. Um, oh, yeah. Have a, look, have a look at some numbers, crunch some numbers for the. Um, That's from Rating the gay second starters. I was particularly interested in the second starter they won them, won their debut. And as it turns out, they're profitable horses. Yeah, but you see, this is different. It's going from Hawkesbury. Well, they're going. They're going to go to where they're going to go. No, You're just no, going no, to back no, the whole thing. But, you, but you, that's Wednesday Metropolitan for Saturday. I'd I'd like to crunch the data a little bit more. Wednesday Metropolitan to Saturday Metropolitan, I think, would maybe get you even better figures. Sorry, they win on Wednesday and then go to Saturday rather than winning at Hawkesbury you, and going Saturday. Yeah, you, well, see. I, what I'm saying is I didn't like Montreal because it had won at Hawkesbury, okay? But there's a big difference between winning at Hawkesbury and winning at, say, Canterbury on a Wednesday or Warwick Farm on a Wednesday. So uh -huh. I'm giving far more value to the Canterbury or Warwick Farm than I am to the, the, the city. So the city wins, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the other thing was that I actually said on the show that I thought that the Portelli filly was a bit more impressive than he was. Was, yeah. yeah. Um, well, so we, were, we were both against it. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. What did you make of Montreal, Glenn? Where, yeah. we, where are we going mm. with him? I don't know where we're going with him, mate. Just a typical game. Probably we'll go up the distance next start. Uh, it'll come off a short SP. I suppose it'll be third off. I, mean, I don't want to back anything. Second run race with Tommy Barron. Yeah. Um, Mark well, was why was Tommy riding? When was the last horse that Tommy rode for gay? Well, Ads was suspended until Sunday. Hieronymus. Yeah. Uh, who else rides for him? Um, well, Jay Parr rides B. Abdullah. Could ride um, T. Clark. Um, you know, I, I know they're all engaged, but don't know. Um, so, Mark, what did you what did, what did you like about Pipeline? Because you tipped it. So. It's, fresh, it's a fresh yard. It's in yeah. its second preparation. It started long odds for its first start at Wyong and, 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 and won, and then it ran into um, two fairly decent races. I mean, it was just like, it's a local. It's having its second preparation. There's T. Clark. It's G. Ryan. You know, I marked it four to one. So you found it with a suspicion? Like, no, no, it's uh, just like, I'm, I, this is a likely type for me. Yeah. We've got, Kalan, like, Kalan, Kalanda got all favours at Warwick Farm. Oh, PR, yeah. PR, yeah. PR, PR, PR. Like, like Montreal, as I said, I thought the Portelli horse was a bit, bit more impressive than it. 
Bratislava raced the older horses, had a bit of an excuse, but it's never good to race the older horses. You know, you want them sort of, you know, you want them against their own, you know, keen, enthusiastic brigade age. Drew Lee back from Melbourne, so you just penning all these horses and left with Pipeline. Well, no, I wasn't penning, I was just like, it, you know, it fitted, Pipeline fitted in there because it was a, it was an up for grabs race. And he's a little bit last man standing, is that what you're saying? Well, look, he, you know, he got a PR, there he is, one out, one back, you know, Take couldn't have worked out better, but that's the thing, you, you know, once you're getting those those, those sorts of odds, it's, uh, that's, was, that's what it was, it's all about. It was funny, they, they uh, two Clark talk of the town at the moment, Ryan Stacks win and they got, uh, Jay Parr, Ryan Stacks of winners, and they, someone put up a market for Premier Rider for this year, I think it was, they were like $4.20 a pair, those two, and $2.40 Huey. And I thought, can I lay all three? Well, why isn't James Dorf over? Wow, hasn't the tune, tune changed? He is wow. coming in December. Yeah. Well, what's yeah. his, what, uh, so, how, what sort of head start is he giving them? That much, what, 20 of them? Who did you say was in the money, Clark and um, Parr? Clark, well, what about um, Abdullah? Clark and Abdullah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean Abdullah. Sorry. Yeah, I know. We know what you mean. I mean Abdullah. I have Abdullah Parr there all the time. Um, okay. So the highway, Glenn, uh, you know, you got the job done. Matthew done again. T. Clark again. Paraded great this um, was. I didn't like it at all on form. It just jumped out in the uh, parade ring. Mm. Um, uh, well, you know, what can we say? I, I think just, just chuck it in the bin, really, the race, oh, because... Yeah. Flash in the Dark was going to win by two lengths at the 300 and finish seventh. Like, yeah. It's just all, they're all, they're, they're, they're getting a bit tedious all of a sudden. Well, I think it might be an idea just to have the highway every second week. Well, look, I loved them and we were wrapped from the beginning. And the main reason the wrap was there is we were getting 18 runners and 16 runners and there was some interest and there was a bit of a Rubik's Cube. Now we're getting down to 10 and 9 every week and it's like, really? I mean, I know that's not juicy, but they, the betting in them is quite interesting. The betting is very interesting. Yeah. We've seen some really, um, yeah. And I think it gives you an advantage too, Glenn, because it's hard to line up that bush form and you're going to go off... And a lot of them are the first time I've oh, seen so, them too. So. Yeah, so you're not you're not noticing improvement, you're just noticing whether it's a good type sort of a thing. Yeah. Sorry, do they exist, good types, in these races? Not really. No. No, not really. But some are better than others. It's all about... Some do look contrast. terrible. Yeah. Like fucking awful, <laughs> some of them. Like old mate. Big hello to the bush trainers. Talking about the bush trainers and just this, because we, we're coming into the silly season, what I mean by that is it's getting hotter. And again, I know it's a green part of racing, and I know the stewards have got have got an answer to the masses, and I know that they're shit scared of everything like to do with racing. But I'll put it this way, guys, just think about this. With the hot conditions we have some of these uh, we're not parading day, we're going straight out, which sends participants like me and other people who pay to go to the races cook her. Can someone out there explain to me how not doing three or four laps in the heat affects a horse when they've spent three hours on a truck at 30 degrees to come from Ningen to run the highway in the back of a truck and when they get him out, the poor things, they fucking collapse on the ground, they fucking hose them all over, water down their guts, try to brighten them up so they parade half all right. So just... No one's seeing that. Everyone's seeing them walk around in well, the graveyard. Well, a few of the stable hands have been speaking to me. They keep going about there because I was having a drink. They go, we drive horses from Ramey to Hawkesbury on those hot days for race six. By the time you get them off the truck, they fucking collapse on the ground. They've been in a truck for an hour. Ka-ching, 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 ka-ching. Noise, fuck, it's like oven, 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 oven. And then we go to the track and all oh, you stewards, all you racing New South Wales, Oh, we're so kind to the horse, we won't parade. I mean, it's just complete bullshit. But that's I mean, what? life, isn't it? Like, everyone's on show. Well, if we don't start getting more fed income in the world, the world will end, and I can't wait. But we've got to be fed income. Like, what about from a punning perspective? There's those that go out in their flash trucks with air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. Who's got the air-conditioned well, trucks? That's I'm what we need to know. Yeah, Gay yeah. yeah. should have nice trucks. I'm yeah, Snowden, yeah. O'Shea, he said they, yeah. they get a pull on the way to the race. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think it'd be a happy ending before they race. <laughs> but they're all oh, made with the truck with the, oh, you know, well, we, yeah. Terry Evans, Oakfield time, I'll come down from Tunker. Oh, I'll drive down in the morning. Yeah. It's 36 degrees. Oh, listen, Terry, you can only do one lap. Well, how does that make sense? It well, doesn't for you make sense. Country trainers come down the day before. No, no, I'm just saying, just be know, fair to you. Just fucking parade the horses. Yeah. If it's hot, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. They've been through hell. Glenn, want, Glenn needs to look at them, and that's fair enough, because he's no, gone to the racetrack to actually do it. Want to look well, at that's, the only reason you would go to the races is for that. Then we had a very boring marriage. I, I, I even hate the bullshit that they think they're doing the right thing by the horse. 
oh, we're here to protect the animals. No, 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 no. Why do we give in to put these minorities and these green groups and these little fags? I fucking walk around and hit them all with a whip every 10 yards. Well, I, I, unfortunately, we have to live in the society that we have, and everyone is going around ticking all those boxes. All right, you well, know? I'm, I'm ticking. Health I, and safety. I've got blah, a rub, blah, blah, I've blah, got blah, a rubber. Blah. I'm rubbing the ticks out, trying to save it. Oh no, you're you're. Um, I'm looking to the Bible. Truth will be your only salvation. Pasta oh. G. Pollock. There it is. <laughs> hey, listen. What was with all those late scratchings on Saturday? What's that all about? Oh. Imposing less, religify. Um, what was the other one? Is he the king of late scratches, Seawall? Oh, oh, and another, about, another thing about Seawall, if I go to race a New South Wales site one more time and see the word, how much do you love me, and then another word, con Kasanas, <laughs> every single day, because the horse might have been tampered with when we got Seawaller and the horse is positive to ice and we don't read anything. Oh, well, that's not that, that's... <laughs> so we've got one bloke that's positive to ice, his third one. Yeah. You don't really. Oh, we've got this con Caracasanas. We've got him. Yeah. We've a, got him. He's a naughty boy. Fucking Eddie Hayson was riding in track work. <laughs> Leave him alone. You know, um, on the radio this morning, they made a joke because Eddie Hayson owned Wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. that. It's quite funny. Isn't it? Oh, Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you had that. It was going to be. Uh, it was a valuable horse. Yeah, I think. Well, it won a new market in, in, on, on the Lightning Day on that uh, the day. Valuable horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valuable. It's funny because he bought the horse with the money he got off that halfback who kicked the field guy. Fucking hell. Poor old Eddie. So, Glenn, this mare's race, firstly, how did how did T. Berry sit there all the way down the straight and not throw that horse past D9L? I don't know how he didn't. Huh? And why and why, why did he sit there for so long? Uh, I don't know. Okay, and why is it when I do the form and B. Shin has got the pace, do I not remember that B Shin controls the pace. So when Shin's there, if you want to come there, he'll go halves with you. What I'm saying is that you can't back back markers when T Shin when B Shin's on the right on, on the leader. He's too good. Yeah. So that's a that's a good point. He so, controls um, pace, my little pull. B Shin on a leader, if you want to be on back markers like Dopey Glenn who backs Teddy Heights, Painted Firetail, and Save the Harlem Lady, yeah. and watch them all run great and never ever gonna win. Well you've got to go, remember B Shin. Small first, field. First 600, 37 and a half. Well, Shin, he goes, oh, I've got my spot. Now, okay, you can join me, but I, look, we're not racing, we're sharing. We're not gonna race. As a it, compact. Fucking oath, he's too good at it. He's very, very you good You need at Dean Pannier in that race. Dean, Dean Pannier, I'll win the race. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So, ho-hum, ho-hum. Of course, the first four around the turn, blah, 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 blah. And of course, um, the other jockeys in that race are T. Clark, Tommy Berry, Blake Shin, James Doyle, Karen McAvoy, Roy Hudson, Glenn Schofield. None of them are going to, they're going to say, oh, Shin's our leader, we've all got a map, yeah. there's our leader. Now, that doesn't mean Shin wins, but ending fourth back, you cannot back. But then we saw a willing race where Gunn got put out of play at the gates um, and was, uh, was you know, never any hope after that, was it, Brian yeah. Carnate? That was a race that was going to be a bit tricky for him trying to find his right spot, and then it was hopeless for him. Yeah. Um, but then we also saw a horse stand up and just spear away from them that you could never have imagined doing that. Well, I could have imagined it doing that. What? No, I can imagine winning the race because it's a bit of a, like, it's an up the grabs race. Yeah. But I can't imagine it winning by three lengths. It's a very well, stylish race. It was very stylish, but it, yeah. it, it, it did suck with the PR the whole way. Yeah, well, yeah, it was yeah, a perfect yeah. angling ride. And everything sort of put themselves out of play a little bit. The favourite, realised potential, got in a bad spot. LMOP, Zalmazar, Avanarko. Well, Avanarko had bad glim. And it wasn't going past It wasn't much. rating any good. I'm not saying that it was bad glim. It was just clean, you know. Okay, but um, this horse, when John Sargent had him, needed to go to Wyong to win. He couldn't win. We're back. We're back, and uh, we're talking about Diggy Willie and the fact that he's won three of his last four. He was he was a struggler under Sergeant, and David Pfeiffer seems to have um, got him on song. Um, yeah, and he's fly, he's flying. I had him third on my numbers. I could have easily had him second. And I said I was having a good bet each way, realised potential. But I should also mention you should have something each way on Diggy Willie, which I, I didn't, which was stupid. Um, but, um, I wasn't surprised to see him win, Mark. Maybe three lengths. Well, you did the margin, do you head in, isn't it? Oh, he like he really just. Well, he PR'd, he PR'd, he PR'd, he PR'd, he called, and then everything got in like funny positions. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. And he it's, didn't, he didn't, he, he, although he put him to the sword, he wasn't putting much to the sword, was he? No, no, and, and you've got to remember the, the, the starting price. Um, 
Nieta Glenn, um, she she just had a little, it was one of those situations where you don't actually want the track to be obviously racing down the outside because then they yeah. pull up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and they all sort of get wide, so the wide barriers get even wider. Yeah. Um, it was a, They went amazingly slowly in that race. Um, you know, 30.3 for the first 500. And there's, um, they, you know, they just pull up. So it didn't cost a lot, found the lead, and Prince Famous said, well, I'll just sit here. Kira was on his back, whiskey all rounds back on the inside, and that's it, that's your, that's your, that's your, that's your pace. Um, oh, pace, 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 we need four Dean Penn. Can Dean Penn you get the twin down here and they just ride together in every race? Um, what's her name? Phoebe Penny. Huh? Beanie. Oh, Beanie. Beanie. Um, Beanie and Beanie. Yeah, so it just ended up being a little bit awkward for that favourite. Um, Kuro had, had, the, had the right run and, and um, was finally at the top of his game in the right race. There it is. You know, I don't think there's much to be said about those horses. They're, they're, they're Talking they're, about not much to be said, let's get to the next race. Malice winning and like, if I sit down to Heroes, run last and then win and then run last one more time, I'm going to jump the fence and strangle the horse. He, he can win next start, Dancing Heroes. Of course he can. He you can. know, because, well, okay, you've beaten 11 lengths, but he got... Stood on his head at the at the hundred. Yeah, but still, um, I'm just fucking sick of seeing him on second last and then winning. I, I'm sick of all these Wallace days. Beyond thankful, charging through at the forties. I'll tell you what, seventies uh, it was on, on on Friday morning. I just went, thank you very much. Seventy one dollars with B Shin on board. Beyond thankful. Seems good odds to me. Yeah, great odds. Um, but you know. <laughs> Lady Lafay, uh, Glenn running into a few checks down the street. Yeah, 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 Glenn. No, also, Unusual also, also, like, like, um, should have won. Like, Gun controlled the pace well there, and then Glenn's trying to go at the wrong time. Yeah, uh, totally the wrong time. There he is. He's gonna. He's trying to work around them at the 700 meter mark. You know, so over, like Lady Lafay. I don't know. She got anything left in the tank? She looks really, looked? really well and strong. Okay, so Lady Lafay. Gord's Pearl, she's come back from Melbourne, she's had a run here, next time for Lady Lafay. Uh, Chris O'Brien didn't know where he was on Mighty Lucky. You know, no. for a horse that had a month off, 1,400 up to 2,000, yeah. he just went, ah, yeah, I'm not really happy And today. Closing Bell continues to parade quite poorly, you know, like. But uh, we've got a, um, uh, a Facebook uh, message about that particular thing, that horse and Goldstream, they've got apparently similar overseas lines, and, and perhaps they're too highly touted, those horses. Um, then, you know, of course, Religify came out, so suddenly you can like Sweet Redemption. I, I couldn't like, I couldn't have Sweet Redemption with Religify in the race. Right. Um, and then, the, you know, that, that, that's the classic late scratching, which changes the race completely. Changes yeah. all betting. Huh? Because suddenly there was a race that was uh, controlled, and it meant that the horses, so the inside is a bit off, and the horses on the inside just get shoved back. It's just... Um, I don't know. It just the Chara looks to be ticking along nicely there, and looks like you know I, it's being aimed at the Villiers. Well, it's the Villiers there. lead up. What's coming out of that race to win the Villiers? The Jaro, Ninth Legion. The Ninth Legion is he? Very delicious he with, with Ka Very delicious with Kathy off. It won't have Kathy off. That's the problem. Because it'll have a light weight. It'll be in a low weight in the Villiers. He's very loyal, Jason Coyles. Hmm? Annoyingly loyal. Um, yeah, I look, that, that race looks tedious to me. And then the nightcap. The nightcap, where the plush, we've got out the where 340. Looks best really good, good odds to me, 340. Is that plush? Been, yeah. Uh, I, thought it, I thought each run was sort of maybe even marginally better than Redoubtable Hearts, but yeah. If they meet uh, next start, I'll be back to surplus. Uh, I won't because of the difference in preparation. Yeah, so much to be seventh up, up and, and Redoubtable Heart's third up. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Look, it was Gord's best bit of the day, Redoubtable Heart. I really liked it as well. What was and, your best bit, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. And um, look, it's a bit of an empty race. I think more than fabulous tells you the tale about the track. It does tell you the tale. Track, track, hit left. Although, now, although he's, a, he's, an, he's actually an underrated horse. Oh, I marked him 25s. He's a dog of a thing, um, isn't he? Leo Lewin, but $19 a place. Um, yeah, look, uh, it wasn't really a suitable race for Duke, Duke of Villain uh, I think he needs to be fresher, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't know what to make of him anymore. And there's, uh, you know, what of what those Waller horses that are in the early stages of their preparation? Gord suggested that Corfin's Power might be on the on the barred list. Yeah. Quick Metallic. defense. Yeah, it might be on the barred list. And Metallic Crown, they might all be on the barred list. Uh, and that I'll, means one thing, back them all next time. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say oh. back Redoubtable Heart next start, I think. 
Back all the wall horses. It's had, it's had that massively long spell. It's 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 right hey, Look, it's it's two runs back have been awesome, but um, it, you know things went well for him on Saturday. But yeah. he he, um, he he responded. He rose to the challenge, and um, and you know, was was perhaps one of the better wins on the card. Huh. That's the end of part one, Glenn. I think we'll uh, come back with some uh, spicier stuff. See ya.